Let's see if she can carry that forward here. Oh, that's not the start she wanted. That was very unfortunate. She made the wing ball. And unfortunately for Kelly, her ball's got the cue ball in. Not a bad layout for Shane this. He can just roll this ball through. Through two's next. As I said, he's one of the few remaining players not to have lost a match. And he's a couple behind Ocean and Filler in terms of the number of matches played. But he's going to catch up now with this double header. So if he can win these two matches to start off the evening's play, he will join them on five wins from five. Matches have been getting progressively harder for Van Boning. 5-2 in his first match against Skylar Woodward. 5-3 against Alex Kazakis. And then in the only match he's played so far today, he was pushed all the way by Omar El Shaheen. Ended up winning by five racks to four. He'd been 2-0 down. Later trailed 4-2, but won the last three racks to maintain his winning start. The eight ball to the nine, he's going to be Kelly's only hope. I'm sure Shane wanted a bit more of an angle than he's left himself. So he's just checking what he can do. Anywhere in the middle of the table would be fine, but it'd be interesting where he's going to put this cue ball. This is not... It's not bad, it's not where he wanted it. You, you could see Shane was signalling with his cue, he wanted it more in the centre. Now he's going to play this with left English. Spin the cue ball round off a minimum of three. He would love the cue ball to hit the right hand side rail. That would be the fourth rail the cue ball would hit. Well, I'm surprised he didn't play it with left. And he's hit it a little bit far, so when you're chasing the position, often that's when the mistakes come. So this is another... It's a nice little gift for Kelly, this. Obviously, she was a bit unfortunate on the break shot, but she's got to try and get on the nine ball herself. And that's good enough, you know, that's fine. Well, she was probably expecting not to get out of her chair until rack two. But this is a little tester. So she's just grateful for the opportunity, though. She had looked like going 1-0 down. Okay, so Shane makes a mistake in rap one, Mr. Van Boning but he break. has the break in rap two. And this is going to be pretty useful, isn't it? Look at that, he's got a shot on the two. 
don't know if he, he meant to draw the cue ball, cue ball back up off the top rail. We'll keep an eye on that as the match unfolds. See how he goes about the rest of his breaks. So why would he decide to employ a tactic like that if that is what he's doing, Carl? Maybe just a, 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 a way of controlling the cue ball, just trying to bring it straight back up and back down. We'll know more on his next break, really, because it might have just been a little bit of a miss hit, but he's one of the best breakers in the world. He's landed a little bit short of pace there. He would have liked to have been a little bit higher, because then he could have just played for the purple five into the left centre. <coughs> now you can see he's striking down on the cue ball, so that tells me he's going to take the cue ball up top end of the table and back round. Speed and line looks perfect here. Oh, it is. It's beautiful. Nice shot. If there's ever a way to forget about a mistake in a rack, it's to try and come back to the table with a break and run. And that's what he's going to do here. Yeah, there were no obvious opportunities for him to make a mistake like that again in this rack once he got down to the last few balls it was pretty inevitable then what was going to happen and so very swiftly Shane Van Boning levels up against Kelly Fisher at one rack apiece There is a Lucius Yap, runner-up in the US Open last year, of course, and fancied by many people to have a good run here. Not working out that way so far. One win from six. Isn't a situation that's impossible to recover from. But he's going to have to start turning it around soon. This is his last match of the day. At least if he can finish Tuesday evening on a winning note against one of the best players in the world, go into tomorrow feeling reasonably confident that he can turn it round. Still have a lot of ground to make up, of course. These two are both proficient snooker players. Lucius Yap, in fact, is the current Singapore champion. Number three, we're currently tied at one game apiece. Miss Fisher to break. So let's see if we can see some more of that quality breaking that Kelly Fisher had on show earlier in the day. Oh, would you believe it? She's only gone and scratched again. Into the opposite side pocket this time. Incredible, got kicked in again. What's the chances of that? Yeah, it was just a glancing blow by the six as well. That was all it took. A rare day, you'll see the same player scratch off the break twice in a row. We used the word inevitability about the closing moments of the previous rack. Tempted to use it again here. Yap has just leveled at uh, one all against David Alcady, but he certainly uh, gave himself a moment of concern with the nine ball it wriggled just a little he shook his head as it went down bottom line is he's back on terms now
Yeah, he often does that, doesn't he? Points with his cue to where he wants to put the cue ball. Didn't really find his target, but she'll be absolutely fine with the nine. Wasn't able to capitalize on Fisher's scratch in rack one. And it's the same story again in rack three. Was he distracted by some sort of noise? He was up quick to look over at the other table. Well, you've got to bear down. You know, we've said it before. It is a smaller pocket, but it doesn't matter how big the pocket is. At the end of the day, you have to bear down on these balls. Doesn't matter where they are or how easy it is. I've got to see that again. No wonder he's shaking his head. Absolutely remarkable, but anything at pace into these tight pockets can be missed, and it has been missed by Shane Van Boning, and that's why Kelly Fisher leads 2-1. What an extraordinary start to the opening match of night two. Kelly Fisher scratching off the break twice, but both times ending up winning those racks after remarkable errors by Shane Van Boning. So Fisher leading 2-1. But now Van Boning, who potted three balls off the break in rack two and ran out from there, has come up dry. Yeah, that's a little bit of justice as well. I know that isn't the kindest thing you could say but I always kind of like that Michael where you make a glaring error and then if it is your break next don't believe you should be uh, you know helped by the pool gods with an easy layout I feel like you should get some more punishment wow this is harsh talk from Carl Boyce well I just think it's a fair point I think Kelly's been a little bit unlucky to scratch both times off a yeah but she's won both of those racks so maybe well, she's had her justice Maybe she has. And that's going to work. At first, she'd have been a little bit scared she weren't going to reach a rail. Mm. It's been eventful so far. We can certainly say that. Now, is Kelly going to be tempted to play this yellow one ball onto the blue two? I don't think it's a bad option. The cue ball's going to come through the gap of the eight and the brown seven. And if you pot this one clean, so let's pretend two's not there. If you pot this ball clean, you would make the two. So I think she's got to attack this. And of course, she didn't attack it, but I think she's missed a little bit of a trick there. But that's not a bad result.
John Lehman, the referee in the background. Just arrived from the States yesterday morning. Did a four days refereeing. So Shane's going airborne. And he's fouled, so the safety from Kelly has given a ball in hand. Yeah, here's the jump shot again. Didn't really get close to it. So what do you make of this layout, Carl? It's not too bad. I think the key shot here is going to be the two to the three. Although it's easy to get on the three, you want to be on the right side of it, really. I mean, if she does land on the kind of the path where her hand is, so on the right-hand side of the three, let's just see where the cue ball goes. She needs this to slow down. She needs this to slow down. This was always going to be the shot, you feel. Just because the cue ball had a little bit of distance to travel, it's never easy getting exactly where you want. Now, she might... Can she dig in and miss the four? If she can, she's all right. Well, she can. She was a bit fortunate there because the cue ball, where it finished, the green six wasn't in the way of the queuing, which enabled her to cue down at E. So now this is a genuine chance. We talk about Shane Van Boning being a serial winner. Even though he didn't win any of the really big titles last year, he won seven tournaments of various sorts in 2021. Well, Kelly Fisher falls into that category as well. She's been a regular winner of tournaments since her snooker days. Yeah, she's a very good cueist. Very compact. Talking about her snooker days, the last 36 women's snooker finals in a row that she was in, she won them all. Healthy lead this for Kelly. She's about to take a 3-1 lead over USA's SVB. Well, what an accomplished performance this is. We were wondering if she could continue on the form that she showed earlier today. Well, guess what? She has, and she leads by three racks to one. Let's have a look next door then. David Alcady has just missed the one ball from distance against the Lucius Yap. He's 2-1 up at the moment. Yap much more in need of the win than Alcady. He's only had one from his six. Attention, please. This is a little thin one. It is cuttable. I can't help feeling Yap is suffering from the sort of thing you often see in an event like this. He's had a lot of defeats and his demeanor doesn't look good. It looks like it's got to him. Most events, you can't lose more than two matches. If it's a double elimination format, here you can suffer a lot of defeats and it can get under your skin. Yeah, we, we, we kind of made a little bit of a mistake yesterday saying you've got plenty of matches, so it's not the end of the world if you lose a few, but it doesn't do anything for your confidence moving forward, losing pool matches. Yeah, particularly for someone like him who's really trying to get up to that top table, establish himself among the biggest names in pool, and if you're playing most of them and losing to most of them, in the space of a few days, that's going to damage you. Well, the <laughs> ball nearly kissed it in the other middle again then. Well, I think we would have just had to put down our mics and go home if it had happened three times in a row. 
Yeah, very close, but she does have a shot on this blue too. And I think she can get enough draw back into this to hold for the three. Oh, she's queued that wonderful. But this is what she's been doing all day. She's potting multiple balls off so many of her breaks. And landing nicely. Okay, you need a bit of fortune, but you earn it when you break as well as she is. And this was a quality shot as well. Yeah, and just looking at the balls now, let's not forget this is to get on the hill. This is to give her some real breathing space. And this will put her on three from four, three wins from four matches. Well, you know, the new world ranking system, the initial list was devised by a committee. Now it will change to a points-based system once we've had enough counting tournaments but Kelly Fisher was placed at number 40 on that well much more of this there might need to be a bit of a revision when this tournament's over so if the eight ball doesn't pass the nine she's got to stun it over to play the eight in the same pocket as the seven. Oh, it's perfect this it's absolutely perfect she's about to go on the hill Michael she's in dreamland isn't she Already beaten Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, a man who's been in great form in recent months. Eklund Kachi, a mainstay of the European Moscone Cup team. And now she's got a great chance to beat Shane Van Boning. Who's going to be breaking in the sixth rack. But he'll do so at 4-1 down. What a story could be developing here. Now, what kind of a story is unfolding on the other table? Still quite early stages. David Alcady, 2 and up here against Lucius Yap. Just looks a bit laboured in much of what he's doing at the moment. And was referring earlier to his slightly downbeat demeanour. But he'll be feeling a bit better if he can get level at 2 all with David Alcady, which he really should from here. Yeah, this helps him being left-handed. If he was right-handed playing this shot, yeah, we'd be using the bridge, so this won't cause any problems for Yap. Slightly overdrew that, but he's okay. He needs a win, doesn't he? He's got to try and win this match. He's got to make something happen. Yeah, and as we said earlier, it is his last of today's play. So got to get something to show for his efforts on this Tuesday in Milton Keynes. And he's still got every chance. Level at two all. Back here, Shane Van Boning, 4-1 down. Cue ball's going close to the corner. Now, I don't know if the, the point of the pocket has hooked Shane or not. I guess I would say it hasn't, but it's going to be close. I think we'll get a better idea from this overhead angle, won't we? Yeah, I agree with you. I think, I think he's okay. It's very tight, though. Yeah, he's having a good look, isn't he? And to be honest, let's just say he isn't hooked off the point and he can pot the one. So, well, he is hooked, because that's why he's pushing out. So, let's end what I was just about to say, Michael. <laughs> These players, they just ruin our best lines, don't they? Well, what I was going to say is I may as well carry on and say it. I was going to say, potting this one ball, the cue ball naturally is going to come over to the other side of the table. She can't really hit it soft enough to stay on the two, and it's not really the type of shot you want to hit really hard. So... It, Four one up. Does she really need to play this shot? You could argue no. Because how do you get on two? To me, if she pots this clean, I feel like the cue ball is going to come off that side rail towards the eight. So is she going for the pot? She's having a look. I'd give it back, Kelly. There you go. 
Now, we are far away from the arena, so she didn't hear me say yeah. that. <laughs> you two have got a telepathic connection, though. Oh, and it could prove to be a good decision. Well, no. It pulled up a little earlier than I thought it might. Yeah, I mean, it was a smart shot, wasn't it? It was always on that kind of cross bank and just leave distance. I don't know if Kelly even spotted that. And the cue ball's just run past that pink four. So Kelly's getting the jump stick. I presume she's trying to jump bank this up towards the two and make something happen. Oh, she's forgot to chalk the jump cue. Wow. Put all that effort in and then just a needless bit of human error like that. Oh, she's livid with herself, isn't she? She is. However, she's going to be breaking in the next rack. And she's 4-2 up. As long as Shane runs these balls, of course. But let's say he does. She's 4-2 up on SVB. Yeah, and worst case scenario, she's still got two more breaking racks to try to win this. In her win earlier over Eklund Kachi, she had a really bad miss at a key stage. We were wondering if that might get into her head, but she seemed to put it out of her thoughts straight away and finish the match so strongly, so she's got to bring that mental fortitude to the surface again. Now I'm wondering if Shane is just going to, like, soft draw this in or is he gonna unleash the power and draw it off two or three rails let's have a look what's the cue ball he really got into that he, he wasn't expecting that cue ball to come back down this side of the table past the pocket but that just shows you the cue power svb has as he knocks the nine over the pocket the simplest of balls to finish the rack, but Kelly Fisher is still on the hill and she'll be breaking for the match when we return. Kelly Fisher's already beaten Francisco Sanchez Ruiz and Eklund Kachi so far in this Predator Premier League. She's on the brink of adding Shane Van Boning to her list of victims. Breaking on the hill at 4-2. Yeah, this is a classic example of what can happen in a pool tournament. 
You never really win a pool tournament just playing lights out. Just playing unbelievable. Something always seems to happen. And Kelly's first match against Jason. She was a bit edgy, a bit nervous. She obviously knows Jason really well. She lost that match, and it looked like she was going to lose her next match to Sanchez Ruiz. Somehow she won Hill Hill. She won 5-4. And now the, the rest is history. She doesn't have a shot on this three, but she does have a chance to play a good tell in safety. Trying to get the cue ball back up near a bridge and behind them two balls. And I think she needs to play it with a bit more side. Yeah, she's played this wrong, I'm afraid. What she needed to do there was hit that three a little thicker so the three ball comes off the other side rail where it's gone near to bounce back out near the purple five. That way the cue ball would have gone underneath the seven. I hope that makes sense. SVB was already been 4-2 down today and come back and beat Omar Al Shaheen. Can he do it again? If he doesn't, then Alvin Ocean and Joshua Filler will be the only players left unbeaten. Ordinarily, you'll be marking this down as 4-3 here and now. But of course, we've seen Van Boning have surprise misses on eight and in particular on a nine already in this match. Yeah, he just come round and landed a bit straight on that seven, so he couldn't get the cue ball closer to the eight. So now he's left himself. It is a tester. And I don't think he can just float this in with a bit of right spin. On an older cloth, he could play that shot because the cue ball would come square across in a straight line. He might have to try to cinch this a little bit and get it stunning over in a straight line. Let's see how he plays it. Oh, he's played it wonderful. Played it off the two rails real nice. Comeback had to start there, and it has. Shane Van Boning closes to one behind at 4-3, and he'll have the break in the next rack. David Alcady on top here against Delucius Yap, leading 3-2, and as you can see, he's got a very nice chance here to get himself to the hill. does that will take him on to five wins out of six he would join ocean and filler have both got five wins and only played five and this is david okady's last match today Said it earlier today, does the routine things very well, very consistently. That's why it would be a very big surprise if he didn't finish this one out. And go 4-2. Yeah, I think over the last few years, Davey's really turned his game and his career around. He's, he's really sort of, he's that type of player where... He's like a matchroom pool player, if that makes sense. He sort of really shows up for the matchroom events. Obviously, he's a two-time World Pool Masters champion. He's gone deep in the World Nine Ball. So, good break from Shane. He's got to play the blue two, which is on the left side of the table. He could pot it down the rail. But that is very, very thin. And obviously the cue ball will be travelling a lot. So that's not easy. 
don't think it banks past the nine to the bottom right corner. So he's either going to attack this ball thin, which he's going to need a little bit of luck with the cue ball to be fair, or he's got to play safe. Can play a push, but can't see that happening. Attention. It is an option, no. Attention, please. And he's attacking this because he's walked round the table and he's looked at the potting angle going down the rail. So it always sort of settles you down that. So let's keep an eye on the two and the cue ball. Well, we said he's going to need a bit of luck, and boy, as he had some. That cue ball could have gone anywhere after hitting that pink four. So maybe the pool gods have finally forgiven him for events earlier in the match, Carl. And at sort of first glance, it looks like he can just top this ball through and get the cue ball up onto the top rail. Look at this. And now let's have another look at that too. Tends to play those shots so well. Yeah, as you said, Michael, it was a great pot, to be fair. And he would have known he, he needed a little bit of fortune. You know, it's not like he, Shane doesn't know that. So, in the back of his mind, he will have put every effort into potting the two, which he did. So, you will mark that down as a good shot. Poised for the break and run then. Is Shane Van Boning going to win from 4-2 down for the second time today? Well, he's done all he can in that rack. Kelly Fisher, though, will have the break in the decider. David Alcady motoring along now on the other table. We saw him closing in on a 3-2 lead, which he did clinch. And since then, he's made it 4-2. Just now happening for Yap. They don't want to contact the eight there. He was trying to slide that cue ball past it to hook David. I think I saw Omar Al Shaheed there. Yeah, just out of shot. Just in shot now. Be next on that table against Eklund Kachi. Earlier on, I went and sat in one of them chairs myself, Michael. Soaked it up, had a little bit of a feel of what it was like sat there. Are they comfortable? They're not too bad, to be honest. I watched a little bit of Jason and uh, David's match, first three racks. That's the only time time off you'd let me have, Michael. Well, we need your expertise in here as much as we can get it, Carl. Well, that was expertly done by David to get on the two. Striking down. Looks quite tight past the four there as well. So he was striking down there to create an angle to get back out for the two. Now... Table one, it's Hill Hill, SVB, one of the greatest male players of all time, against Kelly Quick Fire Fisher, one of the greatest female players of all time. And this is surely the biggest shot of the match so far. Yeah, and it's also big for other players because, yeah, Shane's doing well, he's motoring along all right, but Kelly, if she wins this, she's still only lost one. So there's a bit going on here. Does the one ball pass the two? Should be able to tell from here. At first glance, I think it does. Oh, not so sure from there. It's very tight, isn't it? Maybe it does just. Yeah, it is very tight, Michael. And to be honest, even if she does pot it, the cue ball's not going anywhere great, is it? She's had a look at this three. The, the red three is at the bottom end of the table. So. Great pot, has to be said. Queuing off the rail. 
Now, does this three pass the nine? And if it does, well, how does she get down there? Well, if it does, and she can find a way to it, she'll feel that she really should close the deal from there. Yeah, so now maybe this is the biggest shot of the match so far. She kind of pointed just above the left-hand middle, but even if she does get the cue ball to hit there off this first rail where the two ball is, I don't think the cue ball is going to still go down there. Oh, you've got to watch the side pocket, Cal. Got to watch the side pocket. Oh, count. can you believe it? Well, now we're going to find out of the three passes. She just couldn't get near the three, so maybe she was just going to sort of play into that kind of area and then obviously play a safety shot. As we know, this is a matchroom event, but that arena for Kelly Fisher has been the scratch room three times at key moments in this match. And the face says it all. Now, where's the cue ball there for Shane? He's not got down quick. So he mustn't be ideal. Is he going to draw this off the side rail and back down to play the five in the bottom left? That's what he's played, and this looks good. Oh, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. He's literally got four stop shots to play, and he's come back like the champion he is and stole this match from Kelly. History repeating. He was 4-2 down against Omar Al-Shaheen. And it's going to be four wins out of four, which means he'll go into his next match against Noyuki Oi in just a few minutes' time with a chance to join Ocean and Filler on five from five. Heartbreak for Kelly Fisher. Last night, she beat FSR. Tonight, she couldn't quite get the job done against SVB who's won the last three racks to beat Kelly Fisher 5-4. He'll be back on to play Noyuki Oi in a few minutes' time.